On top of that, we're going to put a REST API um, using Axon. Then on top of that, we'll throw together a quick JavaScript and HTML um, app to let you access and use the data that's in there. And <clears throat> because I'm not teaching front end, that's going to be partly pre-made. And finally, we'll wrap it up in a Docker service so that it's containerized, it's ready to go, it's ready for you to use. And then we'll have a quick look at performance and how this actually um, how this can help you in production with very, very little in the way of system resources. All right, so part one is going to be the database. Like I said, we're going to be using SQLite, and we're going to be using SQLite in memory. And what it means by that is that every time the application starts, it makes a brand new database in RAM. Um, so we have to run the migrations every time we start. You know, the upside of this is that you have a nice, repeatable, um, very easy to demo setup. It's very fast. Uh, you, the downside, of course, is you're not actually persisting your data. So when you use this on a real system, you'd probably want to use a real database. We'll talk about that a little later. OK, so setting up the project is uh, follows the pretty standard template that you uh, create the project with cargo init. And in this case, um, in, the, <clears throat> in the repo, I'm uh, using a project named Webinar Axum. And run the command line uh, tool, cargo install SQLX CLI, and create a file named .env. And this represents the environment variables that um, you typically use to share um, secrets and configuration information be between your deployed systems. Um, .env is kind of a convention uh, used to look across a lot of platforms. You put your environment variable declarations in it. And if the environment variable is not set, then uh, these uh, variables from this file get used instead. And lastly, you will use the command sqlx migration add, and we'll name it initial. And this will create an empty SQL file and tie it into the sqlx migration system. So let's pop over to the code and have a look at that. So um, this is actually the completed project for the end of it. So we've got a little more here than uh, we need to worry about right now. But the .env file is very, very straightforward. Um, database URL, where we're storing the database, how you connect to it. Um, we're using SQLite. And memory, memory colon is the uh, standard list for standard format for specifying I want to have it in memory. All right, so when I ran the cargo uh, my, my great add, um, I created an empty SQL file. And in this case, I've just put in some SQL describing what it is that we want to put into the database when we first create it. So we create a table called books. We're setting up an ID number, which is an integer, a primary key, an auto increment, which is um, SQLite's version of serial in other databases. It automatically um, keeps track of the last ID number allocate, um, issued, uses a new one, it's atomic, so you won't accidentally end up trying to insert two things with the same primary key. We're keeping this simple. And so I'm going to put a couple of rows into the database just so that we have something to work with when it gets started. So we insert into books, title, author, hands on rest by me, and rest brain teasers by me. So nothing too, I made nothing too revolutionary there. Um, very standard SQL. Now, one thing I have run into is that very standard SQL is less standard than you might like between platforms. So if you're targeting Postgres, if you're targeting MS SQL Server or SQL Server, um, MySQL, or anything like that. Sometimes you'll find that this isn't quite as standard as you might want it to be. So it's a good idea to make sure you're testing on the platform that you intend to actually use. Hi, I'm Herbert Wolferson, Arden Labs' Rust trainer. If you'd like to see more Rust content, click subscribe to our channel and be notified as it arrives.